This is Miko from ML Sound Lab, and today I'm gonna reveal all of my mic up secrets for getting a professional guitar tone. Now let's start by talking about me, Miko, because I'm a narcissist. No, let's talk about the Miko 2 plugin uh, that we just released with my company ML Sound Lab, and this is what I will be using for demonstrating these different mic up positions. Now, why should you pay attention to what this Miko dude has to say? Well, I am the world's best mic up guy, so maybe you should pay close attention. All kidding aside, uh, if you get something like the Axe FX3, you'll have more than a hundred default cabinets actually done by myself. Same goes for the Quad Cortex, I think about half of the default cabinets in there are actually done by me. Uh, I think half of Neural DSP's amp sims have cabinet sections done by me. And uh, obviously I run ML Sound Lab and we make IR packs, we make the Miko plugin and we make the Amped plugin line. Now all of those are powered by my expertise in impulse response capturing. Anyways, for some weird reason, the way that I geek out over placing microphones in front of these damn cabinets, they end up on these big records. It all matters for some reason, so I'm gonna give you all my secrets today on how I place these microphones. Why am I doing this once again? Mm -mm. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna be using the Miko 2 for demonstrating these mic ups today. Uh, quickly going through the Miko 2, um, you can make your own impulse responses with the Miko 2 with complete freedom over the mic up positioning and everything. And the cool thing here is that you have all of my cabinets in here. So you have 38 different cabinets to choose from. You can blend them together. You can place up to nine microphones and get all sorts of cool sounds. Now you can get the Miko 2 free, which comes with this free cabinet. That is the Mega 4x12 oversize. And you will have four microphones for it completely for free. So you can make these impulse responses and copy my mic positions right here completely free of charge and make an unlimited amount of IRs for yourself. Custom IRs that fit your ears and no one else has that exact sound, only you. That's pretty awesome. Okay, let's have a listen to what this 157 sounds like. And now in the mix. It sounds pretty good. It's just 157. And the way we make impulse responses is extremely raw and clean. So there's no uh, EQ or anything on this capture. This is the raw sound of a microphone in front of a Mega 4x12 oversized cabinet. Um, this mic up is pretty damn perfect. Just one microphone. That's all you need many times. Uh, but how did I find this mic position? Well, you can go 360 degrees around a speaker cone with the 57 and many times if you want to use the 57 on its own you get the most low end and impact when it's as close as possible to the speaker and that is what i do many times with the 57 so this is right on the cloth and um what i start doing many times is finding the best sounding side of the speaker now many people see speakers as sounding identical on every side of that kind of cone. It's not true. It sounds completely different based on which side of the cone you actually place the microphone. So let's have a listen to all the variety that you get by placing the microphone on different sides of this cone. Different sound. Different sound different sound now there were many things that I actually liked there so I could go for a different sound based on what kind of a sound I'm after but right now let's just try and concentrate on getting some kind of a perfect mic up and what I tend to do is try and find the side that has the least amounts of spikes 
from around 1k forward. That is where those spikes really can sound nasty. So let's have a listen and uh, rotate the microphone around the cone and see where we have uh, kind of the, the flattest high end for this mic up. Okay, so if I wanted to concentrate on the uber high high end that many times is the nastiest sound, I would actually place the microphone somewhere around here because you get this very nice high frequency roll off. And um, this is sort of, I'll just fine tune and show you this kind of position first. Okay, so that is pretty much the same position we had before, and I found it again. So many times I will concentrate on different things, but one of the main key reasons for uh, having a nice IR is to have a very pleasant high end, so you don't have to process it to make it sound good in the mix. Many times if you have this very harsh, you will actually have to uh, put the guitars lower in the mix. And who loves that? No one loves that. But I'll demonstrate what happens if you have a nasty high end uh, by placing the microphone towards the center of the speaker. So um, the main rules are if you have the 57 closer to the dead center, it'll sound brighter. If you have it to the edge, it'll sound darker. So let me demonstrate that. Bright too dark. And what you want to find is the nice medium. And the way you find this with your ears is try and find a sizzle on the darker side as well, which you're listening and concentrate on that and then concentrate on the sizzle on the center. And once you find a balance where you hear those two equally well, you're in the sweet spot. So let's do that. Concentrate on that sound. And that nasty sound. There it is. So that is how you do it by ear. You can also look at the EQ section to kind of cheat, so to say. Um, now that is one way of looking at things, but like I said before, I concentrate from 1k forward and this has a huge spike in here. Not sure if that's gonna be a problem, I would say that is the signature mega sound, but luckily we have EQ here and we can just notch it. And that's it. We took care of it. But let's not do that, that's not a part of the mic up. Um, we can kind of look for a different side where that is not so prominent. So right now, if you see me kind of rotating the microphone around the speaker, you can see that that spike is lower on this side of the speaker. So let's try and find a nice high end on this side of the speaker. That is pretty good, I think. and in the mix. Um, so the weird things that happen when you do these things is, now I feel like I hear the bass much better. With just changing the position of the 57, I hear the bass better. That's just me in my opinion about that, that's how I feel. Um, now, 
What if I was to place the microphone too close to the dead center position? I would likely have to lower the guitars in the mix. So let's do that. That's a pretty good almost dead center position. So let's have a listen to that and in the mix. So as you saw there, to make it fit the mix, I would have to then lower the volume of the guitars. And the end result is there's this kind of crackle in the top end of the guitars all the time. But the thing is, most guitars that you hear on the radio, or you don't really hear a guitar on the radio, but when there was music in the radio that had guitars in them, this was pretty much more common than the mic up that I'm kind of showing here. And I think my mic up method is way superior, but you can be wrong as well. So, <laughs> um, this is one way of placing the 57, but I, I would likely choose this position that I found somewhere around here. Uh, just mainly because it's a little bit darker, so I can have more mids in the IR, have the guitars higher in volume in the mix. And this high end is very pleasant sounding, so even if the guitars are slightly too high at, in volume at times, it's still not gonna sound nasty. Okay, let's jump to the next microphone, the 421. Okay, this is quite similar to the 57, but I find that different sides of the cone work better on some microphones than others. So let's start listening. Dark, bright, Something around there is pretty good. Actually, that mic up is pretty nice as well, but let's see what's out there. Okay, and that is sort of, if you're using the 421 on its own, that is how I would place it. It's almost dead center, but not really. It's closer to the center than the 57 at least. And the reason for that is the 421, this is a vintage 421 by the way. So um, very different microphone. It sounds quite dark if you place it uh, to the cone. So many times you want to have it somewhat closer to the center. The thing is, because it sounds so dark, I many times use it as the blend microphone with the 57, and that is my favorite type of mic ups. Uh, if you want to hear my favorite mic up, it's a 57 with this vintage 421, and if I want to get more beef, I will add a 160 ribbon on it, and that is that is perfect. Let's go through these other microphones that also matter and give you different flavors. Um, the next microphone here is the 7B. And um, as you can see, it's a huge size microphone. Many times you can't fit any other microphones nicely next to this. So many times people will use this microphone alone if they use this microphone. But that's not really a problem with the Miko 2. Anyways, let's go through the positioning for this mic. And I know I many times start dead center and almost leave it there. So let's have a listen. Too dark. That's it. <clears throat> uh, 
and the 7B is a huge microphone and because of its capsule kind of being inside the microphone it's almost like pulling the 57 back a little bit but it's a very different sounding microphone in my opinion uh, this position is nearly dead center i just tried to get a more kind of a pleasant frequency roll off for the top end but this microphone in real life i many times feel like i'm placing it dead center and it almost always works there uh, i might kind of fine tune it like i did here to get this kind of a sound so uh, just to compare the dead center to this position Not a huge difference. Just getting rid of those nasty spikes there. So, if you are completely new to miking up guitar cabinets and you're thinking about the first microphone to get, people always tell you to get the 57. Uh, the 57, in my opinion, requires some skills, but if you have no skills, the 7B one of the best vocal microphones as well. Now all of these have been dynamic microphones which I many times recommend to have pretty much as close to the cabinet as possible because you start to lose low end once you pull them back and especially if you're using them on their own and not blending microphones it's very difficult to get deep impacting low end if you're not close micing. So close mic these dynamic microphones if you're using them on their own. Uh, the next one is, once again, a dynamic microphone, and the 906. You have to be very careful with the high end with this microphone. Um, as you can already see in the EQ curve here, it's gonna hurt, but let's have a listen. And this microphone has a very clear point between the cap and the edge of the speaker where it actually sounds the best. It gets hollow if you go too far, it sounds nasty as if it's too close to the center. So um, it's very, probably once again, easiest to tell when it's good or when it's not. So nasty, hollow, good. That's pretty easy to place. Um, let's check the different sides. Somewhere around there is pretty good. Okay, and then the next microphone is our last dynamic mic. This is the U3. This is actually a vintage 57. And the reason for having this microphone here is because the current 57 really didn't exist before the mid 80s or so. So that sound that everyone loves, the 57, if you are a fan of tones before the 80s, then that microphone didn't actually exist. So if you are a fan of Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath or whatever it was around back then, they didn't really use that 57 that's out there right now. They used this. And this one has way less low end and it's more of a mid-range uh, microphone. So let's have a listen to what it sounds like. So very different to the regular 57. Let's just quickly compare. This is the U3. 57. Completely different microphone. Be aware of this. Okay, so you place it pretty much the same way as you would a 57, but the sound is completely different. 
Um, now, the one-to-one -one ribbon microphone is probably the industry standard blend mic for the 57. Uh, what I really do with this microphone is very unique and different. It's not a dynamic microphone. So this is where I would say you start to play around with the distance and the tilt of the microphone a little bit more. Um, with the one-to-one, -one, uh, if you have it kind of facing directly to the kind of the speaker, it gets a lot of low end. So if you start tilting it, that is where you get rid of the low end. Also, when you start pulling the microphone back, that's also where you start to get rid of that over the top low end that is a part of this microphone. So um, let's have a listen to this. Let's put it dead center, which is what I do most of the time. And let's play with the tilt and distance for this microphone. But it's kind of a very finicky microphone to use on its own. Many times I just blend it with the 57 or one of the other dynamic microphones. Uh, the low end is way over the top on this microphone, but the low end is very good quality low end. So many times you use this for the low end, then a 57 for the top end. I rarely use the one to one on its own, but if I was to use it on its own, it needs to be pulled back tilt a little bit. That's the only way to kind of control the over the top low end of this microphone. Now, um, you can do the cap edge thing and find for different angles for this microphone. Let's try that as well. And it actually sounds pretty good here, but many times it does not. This is an awesome cabinet that we're mugging up here. Many times the one to one on its own just needs to be dead center on the cabinet and it's on speaker, I mean, uh, needs to be blended with something like a 57. Okay, uh, then jumping to the 160, which is the ribbon mic that I much prefer. Um, this one you place just like a 57 essentially, just like a dynamic microphone. So let's kind of go through different size of this speaker and find the best brightness while at it. Okay, so I think I found two very usable sounds with this one closed mic and this is the reason why I like this mic over the one to one You can actually get much more variety and the microphone works well. So my ultimate top three microphones is the 160, 421 and the 57. And many times if I want to get a serious tone going, I place those three microphones on most likely this cabinet and that's where I get my sound. This is, by the way, free for everyone to use. So free IRs, everyone, unlimited IRs. Okay, last, definitely not least, we have the 184, which is um, uh, the smallest microphone. 
in the game it's the condenser microphone that we have here and uh, this one you place pretty much dead center uh, much like the one to one this one has a lot of low end but you can get a really nice high end for this as well so let's have a listen to this That's it. Now, this one being a condenser microphone, when you tilt it, it doesn't really change the sound that much. When you pull it back, it doesn't really change the sound that much. So, uh, the condenser microphone really doesn't really uh, change its sound that drastically uh, with the distances and tilting and stuff like that but you can use that very small size of the microphone to really fine-tune a specific sound of that cap edge position and that is where this microphone shines I hope I've demonstrated that all of these microphones will work amazingly well in the mix and the main thing that I wanted to get through is that the best position for that microphone is pretty much never directly to the left or right of the dead center position on the speaker which is where people place the microphones 99% of the time and this is likely the number one reason why my impulse responses and my mic ups are on those damn big records out there that I'm not gonna name drop once again. The reason is, many people place the microphones with their eyes, they just put the mic dead center and pull it to the side and find their brightness, but the reality is, the best sounds that you can get are somewhere in between, maybe a little bit to the right, maybe more up, you really don't know, you just have to experiment and geek over it, spend some time with it and get the best tone you can possibly get. Thank you so much for watching the video, I hope everyone learned something cool today and uh, go try out these mic ups with the Miko 2 that comes with this cabinet that I used here completely free of charge and uh, that's crazy, you can make your own English response collection completely free, unlimited IRs, see you later, bye bye. <laughs>